Hello there readers of YA Fiction. This is Dumelo Mleleki, the author of The Comedian with a Lisp. I will be reading a few pages from the book and this is how it goes. Having a lisp is a problem. Every time you speak, people laugh at you. They don't seem to care that it hurts your feelings. I mean, what can you do when Despite your best efforts, you are just not able to say that S sound. My name is Litzema and I have a lisp. There are these kids at school who like to draw attention to my lisp by engaging me in meaningless conversation. If I choose to ignore them, they will taunt me until I relent. So, I decided to become a comedian. If I am also laughing at myself, then the hurt will be negated. I pour over material on YouTube to find jokes that have not become popular yet, and I modify them a little so as not to plagiarize them. Let's face it, I'm bound to be a sensation, because my lisp is guaranteed to have people laughing even if my jokes are not funny. But I'm a stickler for perfection, and that, of course, means I must always be at the top of my game. I go to this multiracial high school located in a suburb I don't even live in. I have to catch two taxis and then walk from where the taxi lets me off to get to the school. I'm in grade 8 this year. I decided to do this comedy thing when I was about to start high school because I wanted to make my high school experience unique and memorable. Hopefully that would mean that I could soon forget about my formative years in primary school. I call myself the Ku, which is a play on my name like the coup d'etat. That's what everyone is calling me now, the coup. Hey, the coup, wait up, man. That's one of my friends. This new lease on my life has started off really well. I made friends on my first day of school. The man, what's up? I respond as he catches up with me and matches his stride to mine. Did you do the math homework? He asks in an anxious voice. Of course, I be. I don't exactly have the luxury of being the plaid clown without the obligation to keep up my grade, to keep the teachers off my back. I add, slapping him on the shoulder. Can you lend me a book? He predictably asks me. The price of keeping such friends can be so steep sometimes. So, man, what are friends for? I give my reluctant accusants. Thanks, man, he says, sounding relieved, as if he had been expecting me to say no. I wonder if I have that kind of power. I'm walking very fast because I'm slightly late this morning, and he's struggling to keep up with me because he had been running after me for a while without catching up. I can see the prefect at the gate, shooing the latecomers in, and the other prefect stamping their school diaries. That means detention. Darn it. Darn it. I don't like citations in my diary or school records, but today they seem unavoidable. Slow down, man. I can barely keep up, complains my friend. I can't, man. You know what being late means. I say, even though I know that my hurry will not save me from this de detention. I'm hoping to tell the prefects a joke or two and distract them from their task. It's not like you're going to avoid it now, my friend states the obvious. Sometimes I hate Marin. He has these annoying tendencies to say obvious things as though he does not realize that they are. Detention is not that bad. Think of it as a way to gain a diverse audience. A bunch of misfits unlike yourself, he cajoles me. Marimi is a regular detention and even the principal's office. It's like the boy has no fear. Thinking about the principal makes me tremble. I don't even want to think about his office. We are the last students the prefect lets in and as I watch the other kids grab onto the mesh fence that surrounds the school, I see an opportunity to avoid detention. I signal some of the kids to attempt jumping the fence 
and they start to climb like monkeys up the fence. The prefect giving detention stamps sees the other prefect struggling to stop the kids who are climbing the fence on either side of the gate and he waves us away without stamping us. Already four kids have jumped in and are racing as fast as they can towards the assembly area. We also race to assembly in case he changes his mind. Just before I disappear around the A block, I see the two prefects making dirty moves, not sure whether to discourage the climbers or give chase to the increasing number of kids who have succeeded in scaling the fence. I hear him sounding the whistle and I realize that in his panic he must have forgot that he has a whistle. Phew, that was close, I whisper to Marin as we stealthily make our way to the grenade line. He smiles but says nothing. I wonder if he saw what I did. After assembly, we make our way to our register class. The school has about 10 blocks with three levels on each floor, on each block. Our register class is on the D block, up one flight of stairs to the first level. It is the third class to the right of the stairs. As the teacher is calling out the register, I get new material popping into my head and I jot it down on the back of my school diary. Because I am distracted, I do not hear the teacher call out my name. My attention is arrested by an elbow to my left ribs from Marin. Present, I say, and everyone laughs. I am confused, so I look at Marin questioningly. He whispers that Mrs. Inglewood wanted me to share what I am writing in my diary while she was reading the register. Thank goodness for brown skin. Blood can rush to your face undetected. It was really nothing interesting, ma'am. I was just noting down a reminder before I forgot about it, I say, while covering, while cowering behind Marie. The thing about our registered teacher is that she does not like to be ignored almost as much as she does not like smart mouths. I hope that she will not think I am being a smart mouth. Bring your diary to the front, please, she demands in a tone that brooks no argument. Everyone is quiet now, watching me expectantly. I guess she thinks I was sassing her. Since you are reluctant to share this reminder with the class, I will do it for you, she barks at me as I slowly make my way to the front of the class. Come on, she encourages me. I don't have all day. She sounds like she is losing her patience and I don't want to be sent to the principal so I scamper to the front and hand her Marimi's diary. She lives through it and does not find anything of interest except for the many detention stamps Marimi has already collected this early in the school year. I'm crossing my fingers that she does not figure out that it is not my diary. In frustration, she flings the diary at me and asks me to show her the page I was writing on. I don't remember the page, ma'am. I can try to look for it. I feign the offer. She gives me a murderous look and waves me away. Okay, class, she says as I make my way back to my desk. If any of you have similar tricks up your sleeve, I will make an example of you, she warns. And there is mummery. I give Moremi back his diary and we share a conspiratorial smile. That was close. Again, I whisper. The first class I go to is English, while Moremi goes to life orientation. The math class is the third period, so I give him my math exercise to find time to copy the homework while attending his first two periods.